just the next piece of it um, that I want to share just so we can get the full implications of Brett calling himself a whistleblower. You know, wow. decades apart. Um, so anyway, am I right? You've not heard that story? No, I haven't. It's extraordinary, though. And it's fascinating. And wait, that's a piece. You haven't heard that story. So this whole interview has very little to do with Dr. Asim and more to do with him being an ear and excuse for Brett to share certain things about himself. Do you know what I'm talking about? To tell us all how important he is. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So here's, here's the, the, just the last part of this. It's fascinating. Uh, and in some sense, watching my colleagues completely fail to take any action upon discovering that their model was broken in this very dangerous way alerted me to just how uh, corrupt our system was. Hmm, if that's the case, then why was he doubling down on the safety and efficacy of the lollipops if he was clued in and he's so disappointed in his colleagues based on something that happened years and years ago, then why is he doing the exact same thing he's criticizing them for now? You're muted again. I mean, it's always like that though, right? This go just goes to our previously had but not yet published conversation, right? Like about, right, how can you, like, I mean, it's the same thing. He's now like, Conf RFK is now confused about the corruption in the pharmaceutical industry that he previously then covered or perpetrated himself, whichever version you take of it or whatever in, in other industries. So it, 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 that's also part of this, right? Um, he is constantly rewriting his own history, thinking no one is tracking and paying attention to it. Right. Or well, I mean, it's part of the synthesis, right? Synthesis is their religion, right? So it's like pulling out the parts that don't land well, incorporating new parts that are like hard to prove or that like could be, I have to stop saying like, I've caught myself saying it so many times. You're talking um, to a valley girl. It can't be that's the problem. It becomes extra when I'm with you. Um, incorporating <laughs> things that are either hard to pr prove or disprove or that can be explained away when somebody points out that that's not quite accurate, can be explained away in an innocent enough sounding way. So it's con this constant refining of the, what is it, the thing that you like weave on if you're not doing it by hand? It's like a, um, like refining like the, the loom so that it looks like it's hand woven, right? Like it's this constant just refining. It's like, it's, you know, if you have something that you're like running through a sieve many times over to get all the sediment out or whatnot, yes. it's this con yes. that's what this podcast serves as. That's 100%. what all of their Q and A section sessions sort of serve as is like taking the temperature of the audience to see how much medicine they can give them or how much, how much like owning up to a mistake or whatever. And it isn't, like we like particularly it's for some reason fun for us to get to to do this with them but it's the whole that whole sort of system like we just experienced it on some level with the thing with Mickey or or whatever it is right there's this constant push and pull let's like like overshoot our our you know thing now and then we can pull back let's take a temperature Let's like throw them a bone. Let's apologize. Let's make a correction. And then to, as soon as we make an, uh, 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 the correction then throw out an even bigger lie or, you know, there's all of these things. And, and, and in some cases, like it's not necessarily lying. Like, I don't know that there's a lot of lies going on here, but there's a lot of embellishment, a lot of embellishment, the whistleblower. I mean, I don't know what the definition of whistleblower actually is. Um, well, why but, for all the times we've heard the story? We never heard whistleblower before that. Now. So Brett and Heather and your team who's watching this, you will want to address this next on time. your next dark horse as to why it took you so long to claim to be a whistleblower. Right. So um, do, you have, do you have another clip? Oh, I have many clips. Okay, let's go through your clips. Okay. I don't want to bring up an issue that would be addressed with your clips. Okay. Um, we're going to go quickly. So help me remember 3548. Laura. I have a system. Thanks, Laura. I like Laura's silhouette, like shadowy silhouette in the background. Mm -hmm. It's very <laughs> sultry. Very sultry. Did you see like 
elbow shapes and whatnot. Okay, what was the number? 30? 30, 30, 30. Oh, dear. Uh, she says she's your private dancer. What was the number? 3348. Okay. 3348. 3548, Laura says she changed them. 3548. Thank you, Laura. Okay, here we go. Um, screen share is happening. Let's do it. Cardiologist must know that this is taking place, that the willful blindness has to be extreme for them to avoid it. Yeah. Hey, superstars. Thank you so much for sharing your sacred attention with me. If you are receiving any value whatsoever from my videos, I am encouraging you to give back, to pay it forward by supporting me on my Patreon community, on my locals community, on both. Your support allows me to keep on keeping on and to keep making content like this. It used to be much easier back in the days of a free press, but now given all of the censorship and the shadow banning, it really is challenging for content creators to continue to put out so much work. I'll just speak for myself. It's been, I'm excited for it to be easier for me to continue to put out more content and the primary way that it can be easier is by you supporting me financially by way of my Patreon and or my locals, where for as little as $5 a month, you get to be my hero and receive oodles of bonus content, and we both get to win. Okay, thank you so much for your support, for your attention, and for being Omniscopic Amazingness. Yeah, so it's interesting on the cardiologist stuff. Um, after my papers are published uh, uh, recently, then, you know, it was shared amongst Many people, it's got a lot of a lot of views, a lot of attention, Wait, even if it hasn't second. broken the mainstream. I just want to double check and make sure that this is the right clip, so as not to waste our time. Thirty-five forty-eight. What is he rambling on about? Stand by. Entertain the the troops. Um. Oh, I picked the wrong time. Okay, Wait, I got. It. You got. Yeah, we're good. Okay. So I'm just going a little, a couple seconds earlier to make sure we get it. So thanks for your patience, superstars. Here we go. Culture, you know, this is, you know, if the medical profession aren't, aren't, aren't dealing with this in the way that they should, if we're still trying to mandate, coerce kids to have the vaccine when we're talking about it being suspended for everybody, how does one explain that? Uh, and my uh, hypothesis, which I think is based upon evidence is Hold up. At the root of the. We just heard him say my hypothesis, which I think is based on evidence. So is your hypothesis based on evidence or you don't really know? OK, so continue. The problem, if you go upstream, is that we have very big, powerful corporations, in this case, Big Pharma, who have had increasing power over medical decision-making over probably the last couple of decades and everything. Oh, wait, hang on guys. Sorry. I think I might've messed up. Stand by. Okay. So uh, that was the piece that I got that he, that he wasn't sure whether or not he had evidence and I didn't get this piece, but what he's tying it into is that now people are um, unreasonably afraid of getting the MMR thing because of this other hesitancy, hesitancy. So I think it's really interesting in this particular talk where they're, um, they're making allowances for people to be hesitant around the FOVID lollipops, but they're saying now it's negatively affecting the MMR thing, which is just so frustrating for anyone who's been in this conversation longer than FOVID and has the stats on MMR. Do you know what I'm saying? So that kind of willful ignorance and trying to conflate that like, oh, all these other lollipops are totally fine and safe. And, and this is really um, taking a hit on people's willingness to avail themselves to those. Well, it's always, it's always this. And this is like, again, back to my point, right? When I'm wrong about something significant, then I ask myself before I start making declarations immediately again, huh, what else could I possibly have been wrong about and go take an assessment? 
And this is why somebody who just woke up yesterday shouldn't be scooted to the front of the room because there's not any time for like reflection on like what else, even if it's just that you were tricked, right? Even if you were literally tricked and coerced into whatever, if that can happen and it's happened to me and, you know, this, you know, and, and I'm sure it will happen to me again and, and whatever it is, right? But we're not at the front of the room. Right. And, and, and we won't be. And we won't, but, but, well, thank God, first of all, because I like to reserve the right to make as many mistakes as I need to mistake to fulfill whatever it is the fuck I'm doing here for, for my own thing. Right. But like, well, this is the, the complete lack of like, I, I think it's fine to interview um, people who change their mind about something. Right. But I want to see, like, you know, I want to see the process of, like, just even the simple question of what else do you think it's possible you got wrong? Just even that simple of a question. It doesn't even have to be accusatory. Well, that assumes, I'm getting so thrown off by your mute, unmute thing. Um, Sorry, I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to address audio issues, but if it's distracting to you, I'll stop. Um, whatever you're comfortable with, I can deal. Um, I think the key here and the whole point of all of the clips I've pulled is to indicate that these people have very little idea what they're talking about and should shut up and leave the room. <laughs> and my ultimate theory on this is that in terms of Yuri Beznamov's um, four stages of ideological subversion we've already lost because mediocrity is running the show um, and this is indicative of that is that we have people who have tiny amounts of information being elevated to expert status while those who know what they're talking about and take us out of the picture sherry tenpenny you know all these other people are not allowed to speak we've already lost in terms of that communist subversion given the extent of mediocrity that is driving this conversation